Hello everyone, my name is Gretet here from NoobCastGaming.com. I know what you're thinking, I haven't done this in a while. You're right, I haven't done this in a while. It's actually been about a year since I made one of these videos, but I wanted to see if I still had it in me. So, without further ado, let's take a look at a few of the headlines that we got going on this week. So, the first thing I found, and this may come as no surprise to anyone, is that Grand Theft Auto V has been making a lot of money. A lot of money. Let's just emphasize a lot. It's actually $800 million in the first 24 hours. According to Kotaku and their statement that they have posted from Take-Two, all of us at Take-Two are thrilled with the initial response to Grand Theft Auto V. Once again, the team at Rockstar Games have outdone themselves, setting the entertainment industry's new standard for creativity, innovation, and excellence, says Strauss Zelnick the chairman and CEO. Beginning at midnight on Monday, consumers around the world gathered in anticipation to be among the first to experience the evolution of this remarkable series. In North America alone, more than 8,300 stores opened their doors at midnight to welcome fans whose loyalty and enthusiasm were rewarded with what New York Times called the most immersive spectacle in interactive entertainment. We are incredibly proud of Rockstar Games' creative achievement and could not have been more pleased with the success of this launch. Well, no kidding. There has been anticipation for Grand Theft Auto V for over a year. I believe my former site and Noobcast Gaming has been reporting on this about Grand Theft Auto V for about the last year. When you have millions upon millions of gamers chomping at the bit for this particular title, it comes to no surprise that they would make this amount of money in the first 24 hours. In fact, it's been reported by several sites that they've recovered the entire cost of production, which when you think about it is absolutely ridiculous, but kind of cool at the same time. Kotaku went ahead and made it, or put this into perspective as well. That's about 800 million McDonald's dollar meals. So in case you didn't get your double cheeseburger, that just gives you an idea. The next two things I have for you is revolving around Blizzard. I know, going back to Blizzard, it's, it, the stuff that they have to talk about is kind of newsworthy and actually makes sense with this week. The first and foremost is especially if you're getting the iPhone 5S or the 5C, which launches on Friday, September 20th. Blizzard is informing folks that if you plan on updating to the iPhone 5S or 5C or iOS 7 in general to disable your mobile authenticator on your device. The reason why the authenticator can become reset during the upgrade from iOS 6 to iOS 7 and you could be locked out of your account. Some things that a Blizzard is suggesting to do is sign up for the free SMS protection. So in instead of using your authenticator, you'd verify a password through SMS after you, you use your regular login information. So it's an extra step of security while your authenticator is removed. The other stuff that they are suggesting is to write down your serial number and your restore number so that you could potentially restore the previous authenticator information on your account. Last thing they are, are suggesting is temporarily move the authenticator before your updates. Once you reattach the authenticator, you're going to want to go back and put in the serial number and restore code just so you don't have to completely remove the authenticator. So basically they're suggesting a disable, re-enable thing using the same one. However, having it disabled gives you the option to be able to go back to a different one if there's some issue with the updates. If you have any issues, they're going to have individuals for live chat to help with the tech support going through. And... For those of you that are on Android, no need to worry because you guys have probably figured out how to enable, disable your authenticator as it is. It is easier to get preciouses over on the Android side of things because those come out more than once a year. For those of you getting the iPhone 5s, enjoy doing your updates. I'm sure it will be a blast. The last bit of news, again, is from Blizzard, but it is so gratifying one of the big reasons that it's gratifying is I have talked about this several a time on the Noobcast podcast about how much I hate the auction house system and the concept of the auction house system in Diablo 3. Well, Blizzard has finally... They pulled a Microsoft. They did a 180. They reneged on the whole policy, and they plan on shutting it down. In fact, you know what? I'll just read the statement that is on Battle.net right now. 
When we initially designed and implemented the auction house, the driving goal was to provide a convenient and secure system for trades. But as we've mentioned in different occasions, it became increasingly clear that despite the benefits of the auction house system and the fact that many players around the world use it ultimately undermines Diablo's core gameplay. Kill monsters to get cool loot. With that in mind, we want to let everyone know that we have decided to remove the gold and real money auction house system from Diablo 3. We feel that this move, along with the Loot 2.0 system being developed concurrently with Reaper of Souls, will result in a much more rewarding game experience for our players. We're working out the details of how the auction house system will be shut down, but we wanted to share the news as soon as we made the decision in order to give everyone as much advance notice as possible. Please note that the shutdown will occur on March 18th, 2014. We will keep everyone informed as we work through this process. Well, I wish I could say that I'm remorseful. Sadly, I am not. I'm grateful to see this go, and maybe people can appreciate Diablo 3 just a little bit more. It's not about crappy loots that you have to worry about dropping anymore. You might actually see the drop rate a little more in line with what we see in previous Diablo games, which could make the game a little more enjoyable instead of grinding the hell out of the game, which is what the game became. It was worse than WoW. That is horrible. Thank you, Blizzard. Thank you for listening to your fans on, well, an issue that we saw coming in the first place. And you went ahead and closed that money pit of yours anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, I appear to have made it through a video. I wasn't sure if I still had it, but it sounds about as good as I'm going to be able to get it at my skill level. I don't know what that means. What I'm thinking is I'm actually going to come back and try to do this once a week with some more of the more important news per week. I'll actually be joined, hopefully, by Theora Craft at Newcast Gaming as well, so it'll be a dual thing. And if we do that, it'll be over on the other YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV. If it is me by myself, it'll still appear here on the Grete channel where I used to cross-promote the two websites, which if you find in the older videos, you can figure out exactly what site that was. Anyways, regarding this video, if you have any comments about it, whether it be positive or negative, please put it in the comment section down below. That is that area where you can type things, and the scum of the earth tend to hang out after any type of article or video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day and checking out one of my videos again. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot when someone will take time out of the day to watch something that I put together. And I'll see you guys next week. some help.